the United States Food and Drug Administration presents The Food Label and You. Now, here's your host, Dr. Samuel Franklin. Hello. I am Dr. Samuel Franklin with the United States Food and Drug Administration. Today, significant advances in the areas of nutrition science and modern-day chemistry make the United States one of the foremost authorities in the production and supply We've all got to eat three squares a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, most of the time, I bet you don't even think about what you're eating. That's not good. Your body is like a fine-tuned machine. The food you eat is the fuel that keeps you running. But how do you know the nutritional value in that cup of yogurt or that bowl of cereal? Look on the label. Hey, I'm Gia, and I'm here to talk about the Nutrition Facts label. If you want to stay healthy and energetic, then reading and understanding food labels can help you make food choices that give you more energy and help you feel your best. And we can all use a little more brain power. Uh, don't say it. Don't even think it. There are three things you need to know about the Nutrition Facts label. Just three. Calories, serving size, and percent daily value. Got it? Well, if you still feel kind of overwhelmed by the whole idea of actually reading and understanding food labels, you're not alone. Let's see how much the ordinary person on the street knows about this subject. Thanks, Gia. Well, it's a little cold for dining al fresco, but we've got work to do. Let's find our first victim. So what do you think is the official serving size of a bowl of cereal? I think that one. That one? Yes. Two. Two? That's probably number two. Probably two. What would be the official serving size of cereal? So number three. Person, <laughs> number three. Tell me which number you Bowl think. Bowl number two. Your opinion on what you think an official serving size of cereal might be? Three. Would you eat what's in... No, I think what... I didn't have... Yeah. Bowl number three. Big breakfast. You would... Yeah. Big breakfast. What's in bowl one, bowl two, or bowl three? I would probably do two. Would you point to what you think would be an official I think it's a lot size. smaller than I usually have. <laughs> and a lot smaller than I think it is. I think it's going to be number one. My work is done here. Okay, we're going to make this easy to understand because this can be confusing. For instance, you buy one of those 20 ounce sodas. How many servings is that? One, two, 20? You're craving a nice juicy burger. How many calories are you getting? Add cheese, supersize it, you know the calories are going ka-ching, ka-ching, but exactly how many are there? If you eat 18 grams of fat, which is 28% DV at breakfast, how much can you eat at lunch to remain below the recommended daily value? Have the salad. Okay, it's not algebra, but you do need to do a little math to make the best food choices you can. To give us a hand, we've turned to the experts at CSI to help us out. The Calorie Scene Investigators. Hey, don't tamper with the evidence. What have we got so far, Sally? Well, I think we're up against the toughest case this lab has ever had. I've got a serving of vanilla ice cream, that's Exhibit A in the new calorie McGraph our lab just got. Oh, yes. We're the first to get the multi-million dollar calorie McGraph. Checking calories, huh? You know, calories provide a measure of how much energy is in a serving of this food. That's right, and calories are assessed based on serving size. As a calorie scene investigator, I have come to find that appearances can be deceiving. Consuming too many calories per day can lead to obesity and being overweight. Here's what doesn't add up, Derek. I'm getting a calorie reading of 150 calories for one serving of Exhibit A, vanilla ice cream. 
while an identical serving of fruit juice pop is only 60 calories. The same serving size of the frozen juice pop has almost a third of the calories of Exhibit A? That's right. Then let's call the juice pop Exhibit B. Good idea. Let's uh, check past histories to see if there's a trend. Hand over those chips. I want to get an analysis of them. This isn't going to be pretty. Oh, only 170 calories per serving. Not so bad. But Derek, do you know the reading I'm getting for a serving size? Nine to 15 chips. Yeah, no biggie. Actually, it's really not very big. The point is, you've already had about 30 without even thinking. Well, how can this be? I didn't even eat the whole bag. I've got to contact Lieutenant Vane and tell him our new finding. Thank you, Derek. Let me know when the final results are in. Well, Pete, while we were making a case for calories, Derek seems to think that the answer lies in serving size. And serving sizes are not always what they appear to be. What's going on here? Ma'am, this is a calorie scene investigation. I'm CSI Lieutenant Vane. I'm going to have to inspect your groceries before you enter the scene. What are you looking for? We're looking for calorie content and its elusive accomplice, serving size. These will have to go back to the lab. The lab? Why the lab? Don't worry, ma'am. With our multi-million dollar calorie mograph, we can tell exactly how many calories are in a single serving. Multi-millions? <laughs> Lieutenant Vane, there is no need to go to all that trouble. Why don't you enlighten me? When I go shopping, I just look at the Nutrition Facts label. Just the Nutrition Facts label, ma'am? It tells me everything I need to know about the percent daily values of the food that I buy for my family. Let me show you. Each label actually starts out with serving size and calories per serving size. So peanut butter, serving size is two tablespoons. That's 190 calories. Hummus is 70 calories for two tablespoons. Hummus the Middle Eastern dip made from mashed cooked chickpeas, blended with lemon juice, tahini, garlic, olive oil, and salt. It became quite popular in the U.S., but what I didn't know is that it was so low calorie. But here's the tricky part. While two tablespoons of peanut butter or hummus might be satisfying, they aren't necessarily what I would eat in a sitting, and they certainly aren't what my growing son would eat. He's on the swim team, and his idea of a serving can be totally different from what's on the label. Luckily, he swims a lot. Ma'am, what about this bag? May I? Mm. While this bag might seem like one serving to my son's untrained eye, mm. there are actually two and a half servings here. That means instead of 140 calories, it's actually 350, 350 calories. calories. And that extra 200 calories a day can add up to 20 pounds of weight gain over the course of a year. What's interesting is that serving sizes are often given in familiar measurements like cups or pieces. Even so, a package may contain more than one serving. For instance, milk is calculated based on an eight ounce cup serving. I guess that is just the way the calorie cookie crumbles. Serving size, servings per container, calories per serving. Starting to get the picture? Well, how do you tell just what a single serving is when it's something like cereal? For instance, which of these bowls is the right size for a single serving of cereal, as described on most cereal boxes? You're thinking, both of them. I want a bowl of cereal and their bowls, right? But that's exactly the problem. They're bowls but the Nutrition Facts label is based on a cup of cereal. Not how I eat cereal.
Now that's a bowl of cereal. But it takes about two cups to fill this bowl. That's two servings you're eating at once. Add milk and you've got a lot of calories. That's why it's so important to pay attention to the nutrition facts label. Sure, bowls come in all different sizes, but mostly they hold more than a cup. And an eight ounce cup is the serving size listed on most cereal food labels, based on a typical 2,000 calorie a day diet. So even if you eat a healthy, low fat, low sugar, high fiber cereal, eating enough of it tips the scales, literally. Pour yourself a bowl of high protein granola with lots of nuts and dried fruit. That's more than you need if you're sitting at the computer all day, but fine if you're planning a workout like running or hiking. It's all about balance. And there's actually a nutritional rule to help you achieve balance in your eating habits. Ever heard of the 520 rule? It sounds just about as complicated as a mathematical equation, but let's see if anybody here on the street can help us out. Ah. Excuse me, sir. What's the 520 rule? I don't know what the 520 rule is, actually. I've never heard of it. it. Sounds like a tax code thing. The 520 rule. Yeah. Any ideas, Sam? Yeah. Maybe vitamins? Five carbs, 20 grains. <laughs> <laughs> there, wait, are there five or seven food groups? Let's keep asking. The 520 rule? Mm -hmm. Is it local or federal? OK, could you tell me? Can you tell me what the 520 rule is? I don't know. The 520 rule? Mm -hmm. uh, is there something about five fruits and vegetables every day? Where is everyone? I don't know. Can you tell me what the 520 rule is? Huh. What is it about? It has something to do with nutrition. Does anything come to mind? The 520. I have no idea. I mean, I've, I think I've heard of it, but... We're still confused here. It's very complicated. We need some help. Please. Here's the deal with the 520 rule. If a food has 5% or less of the daily value of a nutrient, say a bottle of juice that contains less than 5% calcium, then that food isn't a good source of that nutrient, calcium in this case. But a food with 20% or more of a nutrient means it is a good source. So. A glass of milk that has 25% calcium is an excellent source. The rule also works for nutrients you may not want a lot of, like saturated fat or sodium. With those nutrients, try to stick to the servings closer to 5%, not 20%. It's all based on a 2,000 calorie daily diet. Ah, <sighs> and that brings us back to balance. Like those after school snacks mom used to serve, healthy and tasty. Hey mom, I'm home. Hey Danny, how was swim practice? Great, my best time yet. But I'm hungry after all that swimming. Oh, I bet you are. How about a cup of soup to hold you over until dinner? What kind? Well, let's see, we've got cream of mushroom, minestrone, and healthy chicken noodle. How about healthy chicken noodle? Oh, that's a good choice for you. How come? Well, it's got the nutrients an active guy your age needs. 28% DV of vitamin A, and it's a good helping of carbohydrates to boot. Plus, it's low fat, less than 5%, and lower in sodium, less than 20% DV. You sound like a nutritionist, Mom. How do you know all that? <laughs> it's all right here, in the Nutrition Facts label. When figuring out nutrition, remember the 520 rule. 5% 5 is low, 20% high. If you want less of a nutrient, aim for 5%. More, 20%. I get it. Coach says he wants us to have more protein, so I should look for the higher percentage of that. 20, right? Right. Well, if I want to win a medal next week, I better start reading. The nutrition facts label, that is. <laughs> <laughs> to review, if a food has 5% or less of the daily value of a nutrient, say less than 5% fiber, then that food isn't a good source of that nutrient. 20% or more means it is. That's the 520 rule. Conversely, you can use the 520 rule to know what foods to limit. For instance, if you're trying to get less sodium, try to stick to servings closer to 5%, not 20%. 
I thought I smelled something good. We're eating some soup, Grandpa. That sounds great. Maybe I'll warm up with some soup, too. There are a lot of good choices. See what you like, and I'll make you some. Cream of mushroom. Too much saturated fat and sodium for me. Well, we all need to watch our saturated fat and sodium. Try the healthy minestrone. It's low fat, a good source of fiber, and lower in sodium. Just what the doctor ordered, since I'm not getting to walk as much in this cold weather. Well, we all wish we had Danny's energy. But when we eat right for our age, we all feel a little bit younger. <laughs> <laughs> Danny is very active, so he's looking for more carbohydrates and probably has a larger calorie intake than Gramps. On the other hand, Gramps can use a bit more protein and needs to watch his cholesterol. Here's another example of the 520 rule. These are eight ounce glasses of apple juice, orange juice, and tomato juice. Apple juice only has 4% of your daily requirement of vitamin C, less than 5, so it's not a good source of C. OJ has more than 100%, and so does tomato juice, so they're great sources. One glass, and you're good on vitamin C for the entire day. But tomato juice has less than half the calories of the other two, and a lot less sugar, so it's a really great choice. But it's also got a lot more sodium, so make sure you read the Nutrition Facts label. Okay, let's review. Nutrition Facts labels are your key to calories, serving sizes, and daily values that follow the 520 rule. So, before you chow down, check the calories and serving size. If it says a serving is 6 ounces like some yogurts, then the nutrients are based on a 6 ounce cup. That means there are fewer calories in a serving, which could be a good thing. But serving sizes can be bad news, too. For example, on something like chips or cookies, a package may contain more than one serving. Ooh, this one has two? That means if you eat the whole package, you're getting two times the calories listed. And with cereal and pasta, okay, in real life, I eat my cereal and pasta by the bowlful, but on Planet Nutrition Facts label, it's by the cup or portion of the box. Make sure you check the label to know how many calories and nutrients you're really getting. And don't forget the 520 rule. If a food has 5% or less of a nutrient, it's not a good source of that nutrient. If it has 20% or more, it is an excellent source. You can get the score on all the foods you eat if you use the 520 rule. And if you're a sports fan, that's totally an inside tip. Welcome to Game Time. I'm Pat Summerhill. And I'm Gail Moran. Today, it's the battle of the dueling dinner parties. At stake, bragging rights for healthiest food get-togethers. Pat? Well, Gail, you know, there's lots of food out there, that's for sure. But the question is, how do you choose nutrients or foods wisely when you're away from home and, say, at a dinner party? Well, that's what we're here to find out, Pat. Let's take a look at our two contenders. Up first, the Simpsons, who've invited some friends over for a typical sit-down affair. It'll be interesting to see what the hostess has come up with for the menu there, Pat. <laughs> and out on the other side, we've got their neighbors, the Jacksons, who've invited a few friends over for an informal Sunday afternoon football celebration. Now, their game plan includes lots of finger foods and a buffet-style setting. Joe Santana's on the sidelines with Mr. Jackson now. Joe. Thanks, Pat. Frank, you've got some serious competition from The Simpsons for dinner tonight. What's your game plan for keeping it healthy without making it boring? Joe, this party is going to be anything but born. We've got football after all. And don't forget the veggies. Veggies with a ball game? Sure. We have fresh broccoli, tomatoes, cauliflower, and my favorite, sweet yellow peppers. Believe it or not, they make a good snack. Mm -hmm. Well, as we all know with the 520 rule, 20% 20 or more of a nutrient is high, 5% is low. So these veggies are, are an excellent source of vitamin C, very low in sodium and saturated fat. Back to you, Pat. Thanks, Joe. It's a great start to what could be a big battle. Now, they're just sitting down to dinner at the Simpsons, but we spoke to Fran Simpson earlier today. Now, here's what she had to say about her game plan. You have a hungry crowd coming over today, Fran. What's on the menu? Well, I've got individual game hens for everyone, a side salad, and baked potatoes. Oh, and I see you're also planning soup for an appetizer. Oh, yup. Soup's always a good starter. I'm planning a hearty tomato soup with fresh rosemary and garlic croutons. It's easy to make, and it's packed with vitamin C. Huh. Sounds like a winner. 
We'll see how it goes over with the dinner party. Gail? Back at the Jacksons, the ball game's just about to start. They've laid out the spread, and our first guest is loading up his plate. Now, despite the sight of veggies, that pile of wings is going to cost him. A serving size is three wings, and it looks like he's got six. Add the half dozen pizza bites, and he's well on his way to more than his total daily value in many categories. Yeah, let's take a look at the score so far. We've got 30% DV saturated fat from those six wings, and another 15% from the pizza bites, for a total of 45% daily value from those two foods alone. Now, the only good news is the 64% DV protein from the meat and the 150% DV vitamin C from the peppers. Now, at the Simpsons, I assume the nutrition score is much better, Gail? Well, you would think so, Pat, but Franz made a last minute change in the lineup. Now, the tomato soup was pulled and replaced with French onion. It's particularly high in sodium, and the large piece of cheese on top helps it weigh in at a whopping 30% daily value of saturated fat. You're right, Gail. And if we go by the 520 rule, 30% is over the 5% DV maximum we'd like to limit ourselves to each day. And at the same time, while the Cornish hen adds 60% daily value of protein, it also tacks on another 35% DV of saturated fat. Still better than the neighbors, but the Simpsons haven't locked up a win yet. Hold on, Pat. It looks like we've gone off the playbook at the Jacksons. They've brought out some chicken breast wraps, and they seem to be very popular. The whole grain gives it a whopping 31% DV of fiber, and the flavorful locale dressing comes in at only 3% DV of saturated fat. I think the momentum is shifting, Pat. And I think you're right, Gail. Surprisingly, it looks like they're not sticking to the game plan over at the Simpsons. Now, it looks like they've forgotten the 520 rule. Butter and sour cream on the potatoes, a creamy dressing on the salad, and is that eggnog? I'm afraid it is, Pat. And the portions are out of control. Potatoes and salad add much needed fiber and vitamins, but look at the size of those servings. <laughs> a surprise outcome in the battle of the dueling dinner parties, Gail. Now, this just underscores how important it is to not only choose nutrients wisely, but to also pay attention to serving size and calories per serving. For Game Time, I'm Pat Summerhill. And I'm Gail Moran. See you next time. As the sports guys showed us, one of the hardest times to get nutritional information and make good choices is when you're away from home. Oh, and when you're hungry and in a hurry, it's easy to order without thinking. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> May I help you, sir? Yes, ma'am. I'm hungry and I'm in a hurry. Let me get a supersized burger, supersized fries, supersized milkshake. Super fast. I want everything on it on the double, please. Sir, I have to warn you that this meal runs the risk of throwing your diet off balance. There's a lot of fat and added sugar, and unless you plan on burning those calories off, you may want to consider ordering something else. How am I supposed to know what's in the food? I mean, this is a restaurant. It's not like they have food labels on the menu out here. Well, some restaurants do provide nutritional information. It's on the web or inside the restaurant, and some actually do print it on the menu. But the best advice I can give you when you're craving foods that are deep fried or really high in sugar is to follow what my mother always used to say. Everything in moderation. Mm. My mom used to say that, too. So, make your choice based on that. Well, in that case, give me the smaller one. I think that is a great choice, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And remember, you can sometimes find nutritional information on restaurant food to make good choices when you eat out. Yes, there will be a quiz on this later. Wait, make that now. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Food Label? The game show that tests the food label knowledge of ordinary, everyday, average people. I'm your host, Label Man. The FDA's graphic representation of the Nutrition Facts label. Oh, really? Our next contestant hails from the lettuce capital of the U.S. His friends call him Bulldog, but say he wouldn't hurt a fly. All the way from sunny California, please give a warm Nutrition Facts label welcome to Mr. Tim Patrick. Tim, we'll ask you the question, and you'll have the chance to answer. Or go to the food label. Or simply pass. However, you're allowed only one pass before you're disqualified. Let's get started. First question is multiple choice. 
A serving size is determined by A, the size of the package it's in, B, a predetermined portion that's easily found on the Nutrition Facts label, or C, the weight of the person eating that particular serving. Um, I'll, I'll go with B, a predetermined portion that's easily found on the Nutrition Facts label. Correct! A package can easily have more than one serving. Remember, the Nutrition Facts label has the serving size and the number of servings, as well as other important nutritional information. Next question, true or false? The calorie section of the Nutrition Facts label shows the number of calories in that particular package. I'll have to say true, label man. Oh, I'm sorry, but it shows the number of calories per serving, not per package. Next question. What is the 520 rule? A, the formula for the number of calories it takes to run five miles in 20 minutes. B, the body's standard burn rate for fat in a food. Or C, a way to tell if a food is low or high in a particular nutrient. That's easy, label man. The answer is C, a way to tell if a food is low or high in a particular nutrient. That's right. If a food's daily value or DB of a nutrient is 5% or less, it's low in that nutrient. 20% or more means it's high. This can be bad or good, depending on if it's a nutrient you want more or less of. Can you give me an example of a nutrient on each end of the scale, Tim? Um, something like saturated fat would be a good thing to get 5% or less of, I would think. And you probably want a high number, 20% DV or more, or something like calcium or, or fiber, probably. Good choices. Other nutrients to get more of include vitamins A, C, and iron. And those to get less of include saturated fat, cholesterol, and sodium. Moving along to our next question, true or false? It's impossible to truly know the nutritional value of a meal when you're away from home. Tim? Well, I know that many restaurants are including healthy choices on their menus now, like uh, light fares or low sodium or low fat selections. I'm not sure if they include the nutritional value, however. Oh, I did see the nutrition facts listed on a napkin at one takeout place the other day. I'm going to have to go with false, label man. That's right. Many restaurants and food chains are making the nutritional information available on their websites, their menus at the restaurant, even on the wrappers of their takeout food in some instances. If you can't find it, just ask. Tim, you're doing pretty good so far. You've come down to the final question. Get this one right, and you'll win the grand prize. Answer it incorrectly, and you go home empty-handed. Are you ready to put it all on the line? I am, label man. Okay, here we go. What are the three things to remember when making healthy food choices? You have 10 seconds. Okay, Tim, let's see how you answered. That would be calories, servings, and percent daily value. That's correct! You're our <laughs> grand prize winner! Congratulations! Make sure you join us next time on Are You Smarter Than a Food Label? Bye-bye, everybody! Man, am I hungry? I wonder what's for dinner.